Alrighty everybody, week two of the season is here, yes it is here, college football is going to be rocking this week, oh boy, it's not as many matchups as last week, but hey, we still got some big matchups regardless, we still have some big ones that all starts, you know, Friday night, um, you know, there's also that Kansas Coastal Carolina game. Um, Coastal Carolina, I hope, just runs all over Kansas because they shouldn't have won that game last week. Yeah, Kansas won a game. I'm surprised. You know, I'm beyond surprised at that. Why? Why, man? They, they just cannot have, you know, an 0-12 Kansas team, you know. Why, why, why can't we have an 0-12 Kansas team? I would have liked that. No, they don't get that. Um, so I'm hoping Coastal Carolina takes care of business there. Um, I, I don't think there's any other ranked matchups on Friday night. So let's go to the real big games on Saturday. You know, Saturday is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And it's a big day in college football. You know, big time games. You know, really there's going to be some big tests for the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Both these conferences looking to gain momentum. Big Ten had a little hiccup, you know, in a couple of games, but obviously those were conference games. These are big time, not conference matchups. And the Pac-12 looking to regain that image, regain the image back of being a good conference because they have not gone to this college ball playoff in several years. I think it's like five or six straight years that they haven't been able to get themselves into the CFP. And they need, this conference needs it a big push and they have the entire day the entire day of college football to get you know, on Saturday they have the entire day on Saturday to themselves to see you know where this conference will be headed this year because this conference could get eliminated from the CFP contention you know like that aside from UCLA it'll be like that if this if these games for the Pac-12 do not you know do not go well. Let's start at the um, the early time slot, the noon Eastern time slot. The Oregon Ohio State game is a big one. You know, C.J. Stroud. You know, he threw four TDs against Minnesota last week. But Minnesota isn't as strong a team as you know Oregon. They're not strong. You know, and this defense for the Ohio State Buckeyes and Olave as well. Big time wide receiver. I forgot to mention him a week ago. Um, they 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 both have to show out. You know, Olave got a couple TDs last week against Minnesota, and he just has to keep showing up, keep showing out. They, they, this defense has to show out. They want to. You know, I mean, this defense for Ohio State kind of struggled a little bit. You know, against Minnesota, they kind of struggled. You know. It's, it's a shame. It's a shame, too. They, they they did not look like world beaters until very, very late, you know, this Ohio State even. So they have to do better. Kayvon Thibodeau, will he play? I do not know because he got injured. So whenever, you know, whenever Saturday hits and if he's not on the field, that could spell trouble for the Ducks. And uh, honestly, there's also the big question to me, me, Personally, I think Anthony Brown is a big question because, I mean, he really he really hasn't done too much. I mean, you still got C.J. Burdell. You got actually a couple backs in the backfield now for the Ducks, you know, that can run the ball. So I'm hoping that the Ducks can just run the ball, you know, against Ohio State because, I mean, that's what worked against them. Ibrahim, you know, from Minnesota was running all over Ohio State. So I'm wondering what will the Ducks do? What is their game plan? against this Ohio State defense that needs to recover, you know, because both these teams do not look like world beaters right now. They don't. Also, at that same time, you know, actually it'll be like an hour later due to, you know, 9-11 coverage, um, but Florida, USF, it's going to be packed at Raymond James Stadium, and Florida gets to go right up to Tampa. And Dan Mullen needs to get Emory Jones and company up to date. They need to they need to just beat the mess out of USF like North Carolina did to these Bulls, you know, a week ago. They I mean USF didn't even score against North Carolina State. So Florida does not look like world beat they do not look like a a team that can, you know, 
go all the way to the SEC Championship right now. They don't. They really don't. You know, yeah, uh, maybe I'm a little bit overreacting, but, you know, I've never really thought of Embry Jones and said, hey, this is a good quarterback. I haven't thought of that. No. And hey, don't, don't you dare, don't you dare say it that Embry Jones is a good quarterback. Don't you dare say it. You know, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's all, he's all right. And Florida can't have all right. You know, they have to get something better. They need that Kyle Trask type of spin on things, you know? So at the um, so at the apex of it, get you know, these games will be a little bit staggered, but you know, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. And then, you know, the next up games, the three thirty ish type games, two thirty here in my time zone. And then, you know, obviously the game got staggered. We'll talk about that game in a moment. Um, Texas A&M, Colorado, in Denver. This is a Big 12 old game. You know, y'all remember the Big 12 when it was actually 12 teams and looked like a cohesive unit. Now, it's not a cohesive unit anymore. It's in chaos. But Texas A&M is not in chaos. In fact, they want themselves to... They want to strut. They want to strut and say that they are a college football playoff contender. And they need Haynes King, their new quarterback, to work against this Buffs defense. You know, Colorado played an FCS opponent last week. Texas a and played Kent State. And 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 really, to be simple, you know, yeah, a and M got what 600 yards last week against Kent State. But they can't start sluggish again. They cannot start, you know, sluggish. I think Colorado might be able to take advantage of that. You know, yeah, people are favoring A&M by what? Like, I think the line said like 16 points that they're favored by. And you can't trust, you can't trust these over-unders on these betting sites. That's why I don't bet on games. There was a guy asking, you know, about betting. I don't do that. So, um, A&M, they have to just keep cruising. Alabama is waiting for you. Alabama is waiting for you in a month. You cannot slip up. You cannot play sluggish. You cannot do what you did against Kent State. You cannot what you you cannot do that. You cannot do that. You can put up 600 yards, but you have to look dominant in doing so. You know, you have to look real dominant, not just dominant, real dominant. And next up, oh boy, oh boy, game day. It's gonna be electric. Iowa, Iowa State. Oh boy, Iowa's defense. You know, I, I wrote off this Iowa team, you know, a couple weeks ago when in my preseason top 25 video. You know, Iowa's defense is fierce. I mean, Riley Moss got two pick sixes, remember? They got two of them. He got two of them. And, you know, what is Brock Purdy and Brees Hall and Matt Campbell going to do? Against this Iowa defense, that's really the biggest. That's really the biggest question here. You know, Iowa State did not play well on offense last week against Northern Iowa. They didn't. You know, you know Iowa State. They're also trying to say they're a college football playoff contender, and they need they need something better than that. They need something better than that performance in week one. They need they need a performance that can light up Iowa, and you know Iowa's defense. It's crazy. It's a crazy defense that shut Indiana down. It shut them down so bad that Indiana was going home. They were crying, and they were not saying nine Windiana. They were saying, you know, they misspelled Indiana. You know, so I mean, Iowa, Iowa State is going to be fun. It's going to be very, very fun. I know this next game here isn't really you know much to talk about, but. You know, come on. <laughs> it's the Texas Longhorns. Hey, hey, how will Hudson Card continue to improve against one of our little brothers, Arkansas? And will B. John, will he run all over the Razorbacks? Because we play both, actually, we play both teams that, these two teams, you know, Hold up, let me, let, me, let me clarify some things. Arkansas and Arkansas and Rice played each other, you know, in week one. We're playing both these teams the next two weeks. So, you know, I'm going to have to look at some things because Arkansas did not look good against Rice. And Rice is not really a team that you expect to stay with 
the Razorbacks. So Arkansas might get they might get smacked in the mouth against the Longhorns. They might get smacked because I'm thinking you know, and I'm wondering what this Texas you know defense could do. Their defense was great against Louisiana, pretty damn good. But they got to do a little bit better than that, you know, to keep the momentum up. You know, you, you know you're sure. You, you allowed 18 points, but you can do better. You know you can do better. You know Steve Sarkeesian can have it looking better out there. You know, you know what I mean. And the other big, another big matchup. This is a game where it's just there's just all sorts of different things wrong here. Because first off, Ronnie Bell is gone. He's injured. He's done for the year for Michigan. So no Ronnie Bell. Who's going to step up for Michigan at wide receiver? Yeah, they dominate. Yeah, Michigan dominated what Western Michigan last week. That that's not really telling us anything. This could be the same old Michigan team that we've seen in the past. And Washington, Washington needs some offense. Holy, oh Jesus! You guys out there need some offense up there. You need to get some get some pep in your step. You know. So Washington has to bounce back on offense. They're hungry. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting time. Let me tell you that, because I mean, you know, Washington's looking for blood. You know, they 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 committed a big big no no by losing to Montana like that. You know, because yeah, I mean they were ranked what twentieth. I mean, you know, you, you can't trust the Pac-12. So you know. But maybe, can we trust the Pac-12 with getting a big-time upset? And maybe, you know, maybe thinking that, you know, because we got Michigan fans out there saying that they're back. They're back. Oh, they're going to do something this year. Oh, the Wolverines going to do something this year. Oh, we're going to keep Jim Harbaugh around. So maybe Washington could put them back on their tracks. Or will Michigan just embarrass Washington? Because, I mean, I, I genuinely don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what what's going to happen in this game. Late, 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 late. Pac-12 after dark. It's going to be fun. Because there's a couple backs in Utah, BYU, that I'm looking at. Micah Bernard for Utah and Tyler Algier for BYU. Boy, oh boy, both these teams are going to run the ball like crazy. And I cannot wait to see that. So, BYU, for BYU, they have to be balanced. You know, Utah, I believe they played an FCS opponent last week, so we really didn't get too much from them. But BYU, they have to be balanced like they were against Arizona. And, you know, things will work out comfortably for the Cougs. And Utah, they're trying to become a contender again in the Pac-12. And, you know, they, they could win their 10th straight against BYU. You never know. You never know. And go off and maybe even win the Pac-12 or something like that. But they gotta, they got to take care of things against the Cougs first. The Utes do. they got to take care of things. Because these, these Cougs, these Cougs at BYU are tricky. They're a tricky, tricky bunch. Both these teams are a tricky, tricky bunch. So, you know, there's that. And last but not least, Stanford, USC. Pac-12 after dark on Big Fox. What is Fox doing? What is the strategy of showing college football? Oh boy. Oh boy. Keaton Slovis and USC have to play better. This was not a good performance against San Jose State. And, and you know, Stanford lost against Kansas State, so you know, there's no room for error here, you know. And I'm just wondering what Graham Harrell was thinking. You know, what, what was he thinking when he called, you know, such a such a poor game because I mean 30 to 7 you know yeah you, you you beat San Jose State but you didn't beat them beat them Graham Harrell has to call better plays my goodness this man has not improved you know y'all remember y'all remember I went to UNT so we and there's a and there's a couple of UNT fans in the comments section of every video you know and he has not proved anything Harrell has not proved a damn thing to me, not to me, and not to a lot of those UNT fans that still have to, you know, have to hear those suffering, suffering words of we didn't win the Conference USA Championship or anything like that. All we got was a, a lame bowl game, or all we got was Mason Pine getting injured every week. <laughs> so, Keaton Slovis, you know, must get this USC team 
back in order. This air raid offense has to get back in order against Stanford. I'm curious what what Stanford will do because I mean this this um, their game against Kansas State got moved to the to Jerry World for some reason. I don't know why they moved that game there. There there was no need for um, for the all or whatever whatever they call the um, whatever they call the um, the the the, um, the, um, the neutral site game out there in um, in Arlington now. I don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I gotta say for week two, you know. Oh boy, let's do this. Who's ready? It, yeah, it's not the greatest slate this week, you know. We didn't get that. We didn't get that world beater like you know Clemson Georgia last week. But hey, we're still getting some good matchups. And I wonder again, you know, who's going to prevail? Who's going to lose? Who's going to come out of this week unscathed? Who's going to keep their CFE hopes alive? And whose CFE hopes will die? Y'all take care. I'll see you soon for another video.